Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how I was able to create this collapsible side navigation bar. As you can see, when I click the button it closes and when I click it again it opens back up. I was inspired by Convex's dashboard here. As you can see, they have a similar side nav and I was able to recreate it. And we are currently using it on our project, Project Planner AI, and it works pretty smooth. So yeah, I just wanted to share with you what I did to achieve this. And here is the basic layout of what we're going to be trying to build. So as you can see, the header is on the top and then the side nav and the content are next to each other. And this is important to understand because when you start building a layout, it could quickly get confusing about what you're trying to do and if things don't work. So how the side nav is going to work is we're going to have a button, right? That little button that we showed in the demo. So when we click on the button, we want the side navigation to close. And when it closed, that means we want the width to change. So let's create another one. So when it opens, it looks like that. And then when it closes, we want the size to shrink like that and we want the button to also stay on that line so this is what we are trying to achieve and yeah so now we can actually get into the code and i think it will start to make more sense so here's the project that i'm going to be working with as you can see i already have a couple of things initialized like i already have installed shad cn and whatnot but in this tutorial i just wanted to focus mainly on the layout and the side navigation aspect to it and then I could quickly overview what I already have. So as you can see, I have this placeholder page. I have a couple other pages that I want to add to our side navigation bar so we can navigate to those pages as well as a config file. So I'm actually going to go start there. That's the key thing for this. And what we have here are the items that we're going to pass into our side navigation. It's good to initialize those first. Then we are going to check the path name, so the URL path name, to determine it, if a navigation item is active or not, and we want to change the styling if it is. And then you can see we have that function to return to us that boolean, and we're using that function within the active here. And then for this one, we just want to check is the base URL to identify if it's home. As you can see, we have name, the path, the icon, like I mentioned earlier, the active, if it's active or not, if we want it to be on the top of the side nav or on the bottom, and you'll see that in a second. But yeah, so this is the config file. And then what we are going to do is we are going to create our side navigation component. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's do that. Right now, we'll just leave it like this and we'll come back to it. Now, this is what our layout currently looks like. As you could see in our image, we want the header to be on top. So let's go ahead and import header. So I already have created a header, add it right in, and let's put that on top of the child. So then now if we go to our page, and uh, you can see a header is being shown right now. Now the next thing we want to do is add that side nav. So as you could see, the content is already showing. So this is what the content is. So let's wrap content around a div. And then we want the side navigation that we just created, side nav, to go right next to that content. So let's go ahead that. And this is what our hierarchy looks like from our diagram, right? The header is on top. We have a div that encompasses both the side nav and the content. And we want this to flex so they're right next to each other. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then now if we look at our app, you can see a side nav is showing here. But it's not what we want it to look like, right? And then the next thing we're going to do, as you can see, when we scroll, we lose our header right here. We lose that. Now, we want to only scroll within this content section. We want everything else to say, stay in place, right? So when we scroll, we want the header to stay in place and the side nav. The only thing we want to scroll is the content for this particular layout. There's a bunch of different layouts that you can use, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using this layout. Out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple other divs around this child. So I pasted it in and let's talk about it. So as you can see, we are passing this condition right here, height calc 99 VH. So that's the vertical height minus 60. And now depending to up to you, you could change this or configure this however you want. But for this particular case, this worked for me. What this is doing, it's setting this container as to a specific height. Rather than the whole screen now scrolling, it's only this section. And then we have to also wrap it around another calc height. And I tried a bunch of other different things. This is what I had to do in order for it to work. So you could configure it this, but 
this is what I had to do and this is what it looks like and we could actually go ahead and remove this because I think I added the padding inside there we go that's much better okay now since that's out of the way let's go ahead and focus on the core reason why you might be here the collapsible side navigation so let's go to our side nav so this is what our side nav looks like we're going to need to import that nav items that we had in our config file. Then the next thing we're going to need to import is our icons to represent the opening and closing of the side navigation. So that's Chevron left and Chevron right that I'm using from Lucid React. We also need to import the tooltip, a component from the Shad CN library to show what item it is when it's collapsed. And then we could go ahead and add some more React libraries as well as link and then make this a used client because we are going to need to use a use hook so once we've done that then we could go inside side nav and we need to create a variable called is sidebar expanded because we want to check the state whether the user has clicked the button to expand or not expand the side navigation after that then we want to initialize the navigation items inside another variable because this was a component that was returning an array so we want to save that inside here and so it's easier to use and then we also have this function called toggle sidebar which toggles the sidebar to either be false or true now the next thing we need to do is our root div needs to be able to change in width. So as you could see in our diagram that we created, we have two different widths and we want this div to represent that. So what we're going to need to do is create a class name. Let's use this. Let's also import CN. The first thing we're going to add is a condition. We're going to check if the sidebar is expanded. If it is, then we want the width to be 200 pixels, else we want it to be 68. So that's going to help us determine the width of the side nav. And then this is the rest of what we want the class name to be. We want the border right to be shown. So as you can see, there's a border now here. We want to add these for it to have a smooth open and close. And you'll see that once we add our button. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our side navigation content. And I'm going to paste in the code and then we'll walk through it. So here it is. And as you can see, we're getting an error because we have this side nav item component, which I am also going to add. There we go. Okay, we got our item. So let me open this up so we could see the code a little bit more. And then we'll have the web app on the side here. Here, which is fine now let's start with the item so as you can see we have this aside here this is the root and this contains our navigation items now if we open this back up you can see we have a top and a bottom that is this part right here is the top and then we have settings on the bottom let's start with top you could see we have a div and then within a div we are wrapping it around a column and then we are checking if the nav item is positioned at top if it is we are going to return our uh, side navigation item and then what this looks like if we go down to the side nav item component this is what it looks like we're passing the label the icon the path if it's active and if the sidebar is expanded to this component and then we have styled it in a way so that it looks like this we are checking if it's expanded if it's expanded we want a link that is associated with it and we want it to go to that path so if we click on this right now it will take Take us to the profile page and this is what it looks like if we go back to the code here's some of the styling that we did if it's active then we're going to be changing the styling so this is what it looks like we're changing the background color otherwise if it's not active then we want it to behave like this if we hover over it then it's going to show this background you can see when we hover over the active item nothing shows so that's because of the styling and you could take a look at that and then here you see we have the icon with the label and then and they are in a flex row we have certain padding and then this is what's making it look like that and then if it is not expanded which it will look like this and you will see once we add the button that we will have this tooltip provider and then we have the link associated with it so when we click on it it behaves similarly to this link right here but the only thing that we do not have is the label we don't want to show the label because we won't have enough space for it and then this is the tooltip content so then it's going to show the label here instead of the label that's next to the icon and we'll see that in a second 
second. So that is what this side nav item is and we are passing it in here. And then for the bottom, we are mapping through the nav items again and then we are checking if the position is at the bottom and then we're gonna show our eye item if it is. So as you can see, settings is the only one the position at bottom and then we have a sticky bottom so that's how it's sticking to the bottom right here and bottom zero and then we have a little bit of a margin so then it's not all the way at the bottom then the last thing we need to do is add our button to make sure that it collapsed and we could have this change and this be used so i'm going to go ahead and paste in the button and then walk through it so as you can see we have the button right here and then the button itself is an absolute so we want it from the bottom to be bottom 32 which is 128 pixels if we change this then it will change the distance that it is from the bottom so you can see it went up a little bit more and if you want to bring it back down you just decrease it so that's how you control that and then we also might have to adjust the right here so how much we want it to be in the right so if we remove this this is what it's going to look like like that so if we put it back in then it adjusts the button to be in the right position and then there are a couple other attributes here like the styling and what we want it to look like uh, but then as you can see when we click it the side nav collapses and then you can see we see our icons and then our tool tips are showing up now there's a little bit of a bug here as you can see when you hover over it it's a, not really aligned and then also it's a transparent background so that has to do with the default tooltip that comes with Shatzien. I'm going to place the one that I'm currently using in my other projects so make sure to update your tooltip as well to this one. There are a couple other things that I had to change here. So now when you hover over it, it should work fine and it's aligned correctly. So that's just a heads up. So now your tooltip is working. If you click on it, it will take you to that page and you can see it's active. When we click on the button, it opens up the side navigation. And then also if we try closing it, you can see that the side nav goes away and then um, I don't have it set up right now that I could be I could maybe set it up in another video But when you click on this it could show you your navigation items And then if we open it back up then the side nav shows up again. So there it's also responsive and Yeah, so that's it for this video you guys the code for this will be in the description below If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. But yeah, hope this tutorial is helpful and thanks for watching